Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. It's good to have you in our worship service. Um, just a couple of things to take note of. Uh, it's been in here for a little bit as far as uh, Bible school goes. Uh, that is coming up pretty soon, uh, less than a month away now. And I know that they're still looking for helpers and there are registration forms available on the back table there also. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, please contact Stephanie uh, or Sarah might know the answer to simple questions. Maybe not, maybe, maybe not. But uh, uh, feel free to ask if you have any questions. Uh, a couple of prayer requests this morning. Uh, Jay Dunnick is out of the hospital and uh, doing well and uh, hopefully will be... Um, Hopefully most of his story is, is uh, finished with this particular uh, problem that he's been having. Uh, but please keep him and Esther in your prayers still. Uh, and then also, uh, Jeannie asked for prayer for her brother Rodney. Uh, he's got cancer and uh, they're gonna be doing surgery this week and it's a pretty uh, major surgery. Uh, and then Mike, who's the Falkenroth son-in-law, has been having some uh, health issues. So pray for Mike, please. And uh, Vera also has something to share with us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, Christmas in July. We are still technically in July, so thank Christmas, everybody, still. Um, Christmas shoe boxes. Um, I started getting emails from Target and all the other wonderful places regarding school supplies. So, heads up, guys. I know the kids don't want to start thinking about school. I'm sorry. But um, if you're thinking about putting school supplies in your shoe boxes, now is the great time to start stocking up on that stuff. Also, we have some wonderful people who have made us some handmade stuff. We have some scarves that have been handmade, and we have some hats, um, little uh, knit hats that have been made. So I do have a stock of those that if you want any of those to put in your shoebox, please let me know and I can get those to you. So that way we can get those put in the shoeboxes as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vera. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we have come here to, to worship and to bow down before you today. Um, we ask that you would meet us here, that you would give us the grace to know, uh, for us to realize how important you are, how great and wonderful you are. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this time, and we pray for those who have been mentioned uh, in prayer or, or, or as who are sick today, we ask that you would give them your grace and meet them in their needs. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.
as we're starting our worship service, would you join me in praising God? Please take a moment and stand. Words will be up on the screens as we're going to praise God for his majesty. Praise God for his blessings. loving and kind. We thank you, Lord, that we have a God such as you, and we lift up our voices to you this morning in praise. Praise the Lord. There is joy in the Lord. Like a river 
part of worship is here I am to worship. And my prayer is that that is why we're here, to worship a living and holy God. seated. Well, good morning. good morning. I think that's on. Yep. I have something I found in my yard the other day while I was cutting the grass. You know what that is? Yeah. Do you know what kind of egg or what kind of bird it came from? No, it's real. It, this is a robin's egg. There's a, there are some robins who live in the trees in my yard, and uh, it fell out of the nest. But, uh, excuse me? Well, I couldn't really go and put it back. Uh, it was definitely up in the tree that was 
uh, above this. But uh, yeah, but I wanted to just say uh, one thing about birds this morning, or ask you one question. Do you know why birds sing? To have a relationship and to get their mate. To talk to each other, right? To find their mate. Yep, yep. Anybody else? Is there a way of communication? Right, they communicate. Yep, yep. And one other thing, birds sing to praise God. When you hear birds chirping or tweeting or whatever, they are praising God. Now, I know uh, Mrs. Keener back here has birds in her house, and uh, they praise God all the time. <laughs> and they are loud all the time they are praising God. <laughs> but that's what we should be like, praising God all the time and singing the songs that God wants us to sing, uh, not just with like notes and melodies and that kind of thing, but just praising God all the time with everything you are, because birds were created to praise God, and so were you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us uh, the birds and the trees and uh, everything that praises you just constantly in this world. Lord, may we also be people that praise you with our whole hearts all the time. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but um, God loves you. Yes. I've got a friend Closer than a brother There is no judgment Oh, how he loves me I've got a friend He is my strength He is my portion with me in the valley, with me in the fire, with me in the storm. Let all my life testify, hallelujah, we are not alone, God really loves us. God really loves us, hallelujah, oh praise my soul, God really loves us, God really loves us, his mercy is enough. His grace is sufficient, so come if you're needing forgiveness and healing, His mercy is enough. And this is our hope, the cross it has spoken, death is no more, Christ is the Lord, oh this is our hope. We are not alone. God really loves us. God really loves us. Hallelujah. Oh, praise my soul. God really loves us. God really loves us. And oh, Savior he is. What a father, what a friend, what a Savior he is. Ah.
Hallelujah. We are not alone. God really loves us. God really loves us. Hallelujah. Oh, praise my soul. God really loves us. God really loves us. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Beautiful. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Yeah, thank you, Rob. That great reminder. We're in a worship service right now, right? Amen. And uh, the question is, what is worship? Is it uh, the music that we've just had for uh, a little while here? Uh, does it include the, the sermon that's coming up? I mean, are, are you able to worship in the sermon, or is, it, uh, is your goal just, let me stay awake for 25 minutes here? <laughs> we were talking about that before the service. That's why I brought that up. And people were saying, I've never fallen asleep. Good. Better not today. Is this worship in here, and then as soon as you go out those doors and you get in your car, that's not worship anymore? What is worship? We're going to be talking about this for the next four weeks, or including today, uh, about what is worship? How can you worship uh, a little bit better than you've worshiped in the past? Uh, what all does it include? What parts of your life are in worship or should be in worship mode before God? And what parts maybe, you know, we'll save that for me. Uh, what parts are, I mean, what, how does that go? Um, the short answer is that your whole life can be worship. And the long answer, the, I mean, the eternal answer really, is that if you are devoted to Christ, if you've given your life to Him, accepted the forgiveness that He's offered to you, then the, you will be spending eternity in worship. That is the really long answer in learning what it means to worship more and more and more. I want to start this morning by reading from Ephesians chapter 1, uh, and uh, it's just verses 3 and 12, and then we're going to take a little closer look at, at between, what's in between there. Uh, but if you can imagine, uh, this is like a sandwich, and verse 3, verse 12, they're like the pieces of bread. And then everything else uh, in between is the, the filler there. But Ephesians chapter 1, 3 and 12 go like this, "'Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.'" who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And then verse 12, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are with us. You've made yourself known to us through your word, through your spirit, through Jesus and who he is. Uh, through the testimony of others and, and what you've done in our lives. And Lord, I pray that we could, we could meditate on you and, and listen to you today and worship you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, in the first chapter of Ephesians, in between verses 3 and 12, which we're not going to read because it's, uh, it would just take too long, there are at least 25 blessings that are given to you as a child of God. And they're blessings from God uh, for, uh, for every one of us, every one of you, all at once. But then individually, each person receives these blessings. And at the beginning it says to praise, and at the end it says to praise. And I'm going to run through these very quickly and not stop on any of them here. But God has blessed you in the heavenly realms. You have every spiritual blessing in Christ. God chose you to be in Christ. God chose you before the creation of the world. God shows you to be holy and blameless in His sight. And God loves you. God planned out your future before time began. God adopted you through Jesus Christ. Your adoption pleases God. Your adoption was God's will. Your adoption praises God's grace. God gives you grace in Jesus, the one He loves. You have redemption. Jesus' sacrifice keeps you. Your many sins are forgiven and forgotten in an endless ocean of grace. Grace has been poured out all over you. The all-knowing God has revealed what you did not know. God's will was done through Jesus, and God has all power to do everything that God wants, to do all of God's will. These days will soon be done. And God will end all divisions and unite everything under Jesus Christ at the right time in the future, in order that you might praise, in order that we might praise as the corporate body of Jesus Christ, that we would praise God. Now, just one of these blessings is enough to keep you busy <laughs> For a long time. Just think about the, top, the one at the top of this list here. Your many sins are forgiven. You could spend all day, maybe all week, listing out all your sins, and God would say, I've forgiven that one. I've forgiven that one, and 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 from the top to the bottom. God has forgiven all your sins. Amen. Even the ones that you haven't committed, the ones that are coming today, the ones that are going to be tomorrow. Jesus already died on the cross for that. You've already been cleansed from that. God has already seen that. And God has loved you enough to save you from the punishment that, that you, I, we all, would deserve because of that sin. You could spend a long time just meditating on that. And there are at least 25, just from verses 3 to 12. And in the whole chapter, there's at least 50. In, in the whole book of Ephesians, there are dozens and dozens of more blessings that God has for you. And, and I, I want to give you a challenge, homework assignment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and there's three levels to it. One is just read Ephesians 1, and thank God as you come across these blessings. Just thank God. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. The second level, if you want to call it that, second challenge would be to after you've read that chapter, go back and make your own list. You know, it probably would be a lot of similar words here, but there's a lot of Ephesians 1 that we didn't even look at. So, just Make your list, all the blessings that God has given to you as a child of God and as part of the body of Christ. And, the, and, and do that. And, and pick one out, and like we did just for 10 seconds about many sins are forgiven, just meditate on that and sort of chew on that all day, that that is your blessing for the day. And then... Another challenge, a little bit further, a little bit deeper, do that for five days or ten days. Read the chapter again, go through and say, oh, you know, I didn't see this the first time. I didn't see that the second time or third time. There's new things in here every day. And you'll find new things, new blessings for you. And, and praise God for all of them, for all the work that God has done. 
Because God has done this in you, you were created to worship. That is your natural response to God. A lot of times we think about, oh, the natural way is the, the sinful way. Sin is going to bend me away from following God. But if you are a child of God, really the most natural thing for you to do would be to, to walk in that and to become more and more like the person that God wants you to be, praising more and more and more every day, no matter what your circumstances are or what is going on around you. But God has chosen you, saved you, made you so that you can praise God. And when you let go of sin and selfishness, your heart is drawn to Jesus in the way that a bird can always find its way back to the nest or the way a deer is drawn to water when it's thirsty. Well, you're created to worship, and worship covers every area of your life. We've got... Uh, I don't, that's Charlton Heston up in the corner with the commandments. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Charlton Heston looked like Moses or Moses looked like Charlton Heston, uh, but, but uh, that's from that old movie about the Ten Commandments. But anyway, there's a story in the Gospel of Mark, and it's also Matthew, uh, about Jesus and some of the teachers of the law. He'd been in a long struggle by this point. Uh, this was after uh, Palm Sunday before the crucifixion. But anyway, a uh, long struggle about what was important. And one of the teachers of the law came up and said, of all the commandments, which is the most important one? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And, and the second commandment, second greatest, would be to love your neighbor as yourself. But the point here about that first one is that there is no part of you that is not under God's authority. Love the Lord with all of yourself, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every part of you can be used to worship God and should be. Every part of your life can be used to worship God, and should be. You cannot separate out pieces of, of what you are to devote to God uh, and then keep some for yourself. Do you want to know how to cut a candy bar exactly in half, perfectly in half? You could weigh it on a little uh, micro scale, and it would come out exactly in half. The way to cut a candy bar in half is you give it to the older brother and you tell him cut it in half and the younger brother gets the first choice. <laughs> it will be cut exactly in half. We know because we did that in our house. <laughs> and then we actually did it in thirds. But anyway... Some people think, I'll give, my, I'll give half my life to God, my spiritual life to God, but the rest of me is for me. You can't divide your life in half or thirds or give God 80%. It's all, all or nothing, really. Did you guys ever do that in your house? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, God wants all, God deserves all. And worship affects how you treat others. In Hebrews it says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices God is, is pleased. See the connection there. there. There are two kinds of sacrifices mentioned there. One is the, the sacrifice of praises to, to God by your, by your lips, by your words, but then also by your actions. Your actions towards others is a sacrifice. And both, both of those sacrifices require you to put yourself in second place, 
to put God first and to put others before you as well, to consider others as more important than yourself. Treat people with kindness and generosity. That's, that honors God. And God will be pleased with both kinds of sacrifice. There's another, we're, we're just going to jump over here. Uh, in Romans, Paul talks about another kind of sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. And Paul has been taking, uh, it's about 11 chapters of God's mercy and judgment, but, but mostly mercy. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. One of the songs that we sang earlier is known as the doxology. And uh, Leslie leaned over to me, I guess I can say this, Leslie leaned over to me and said, when I was growing up in the Catholic Church, we sang that at the end of the service every Sunday. And my response is, when I was growing up in the Baptist Church, we sang that with the offering. <laughs> the ushers would, would, would go out and, and take the offering, and Margaret Walker would be on the piano, or to be on the organ. And she would be playing whatever song she was playing for the offertory. And then it would be, da, 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 and that was the signal. Everybody stood up, and the ushers walked down to the front and put the offering on the communion table. Because praise and offering and sacrifice go together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and we return part of the blessings that God has given to us. The monetary uh, the return of the monetary, the tithes and the, the offerings, is a symbol of the giving of one's self. Now, people can give money to charities and churches uh, and not really give their heart, give their self to that thing. But you cannot give your heart and yourself to God and not give an offering a tithe to show the, 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 the devotion that you have to God. It's a symbol of what God has given for you. And sometimes that is a sacrifice, but it is worship. Now, going back to this living sacrifice in Romans, living sacrifices are difficult because you know, if I, if I offer a sacrifice and it dies there, then it's, it's done. But for me, for you, the living sacrifice has to be every moment because I'm still alive and I need to stay on that place or in that place of humility and, and surrender. And it's a, it's a difficult thing because when I put myself on God's altar, you know, it's okay for a while but pretty soon I want to get up and do my own thing, and probably yourself as well. But God says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. That is holy, and that is pleasing to God. That is worship. As you give yourself to God more and more and do not conform to the old patterns, you will be changed, transformed. And worship leads to understanding. This is a picture of the pastor's retreat that Leslie and I were at uh, a few weeks ago. I just want to show you, yes, we did go. We didn't just, just go to the beach, but uh, we did go to uh, a, a, a retreat there with other pastors. In Psalm 73, the psalm writer Asaph is having a difficult time. This is one of these psalms where he's kind of complaining and wondering about life and, and the 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 things that don't make sense to him. Things seem to be upside down in his world. And he writes, I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. What a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked was the, the issue he was dealing with right there. But, but I went into the sanctuary, and then I finally understood 
it made sense to me, God, when I put you first. When I started to worship you first, it made sense. When he stopped looking at the confusion of the world and put, him into, put himself into a place, an attitude of worship, everything else became more clear. In your life, if you are looking at the world and just, just thinking about the confusion of the world and uh, the way things are, things aren't going to make sense to you until you see God first, until you see who God is and think about what God is and, and what God wants from you and, and in you and what God wants to do in the world, then things make a lot more sense in the world. Because if you leave God out, it's just craziness. <laughs> but you think about God first, you worship God and accept what the Bible says and affirms as true. Then, then everything makes sense. It, it makes sense that, that the world needs Jesus, that you need Jesus, I need Jesus. We all need the Savior to save us from sin and suffering. If you keep looking to Jesus and honor Him, you'll find that He is the answer. And He's the answer and asks for commitment. Because worship leads to commitment. The last point here. And this is from the, uh, the King James. I uh, need to respect that uh, all the time, but we'll read once in a while. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah, who was one of the greatest, most significant prophets in, in the history of, of the nation of Israel, uh, had an experience, a, a vision where he was transported in his mind or, or somehow uh, into the, the very presence of God. And there were, there were angels and, and creatures all around. Uh, but, but at one point Isaiah said, uh, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, one of the creatures around God, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Isaiah knew that he was a sinful man, and he could not stay in the presence of God. But then God provided the, the cleansing that he needed in, in his soul. And Isaiah said, when, when God said, who is going to go and serve me? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. Being in the presence of God and understanding who God is leads to commitment, and it leads to service. We call this the worship service, right? Worship is service. Service is worship. So when you, after we sing the last song and, and you're leaving here, your worship service is continuing. In fact, there are a lot more hours out there than there are in here in your life. That's where your real worship service is, out there in the rest of your life. So look to God. Seek Him always. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Walk with Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that You've done so much for us. And Lord, our, our only response is worship and submission, surrender, honoring You with everything that is in our lives. And we want to respond like Isaiah did, that here we are, Lord, Use us, send us in this world that we may worship you and serve you in every possible way. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Also, um, just if, if you're here today and you have a prayer concern, uh, there'll be people over here who can pray with you after the service and just very quietly and privately over here. Or if you uh, are feeling called to 
uh, unite with the church, uh, join with the church in fellowship, uh, or at, just talk about salvation for you, uh, please come to the front this morning. Um, let's pray, or let's sing. Excuse me. How great thou art. Nothing says it more. Please stand.
Now go out and walk in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, bowing down to Him, worshiping, saying, How great Thou art. Amen. Amen.